My kids, maniacs, what it do, what it do? Where y'all at? Come on up in here and click that like button one time. I guess I'll get started tonight by saying YouTube is tripping again. YouTube, I don't understand. I don't know what's wrong with you, but you're not letting me monetize videos no more. What's up with that? Like, what's going on? And you're not giving out my notifications. Where is everybody at? Lawyer, what up, baby boy? What's going on? But yeah, they tripping on me again, man. I don't know what's going on, man. I don't know what I did wrong. But they've been blocking my videos. I actually did a story video and they won't let me put it up. I don't know what's wrong with it. So been waiting for two days. Megalicia, long time no sleep. Miss 213 is back. Miss 213 to drop the 702 to 562 to 818 to 909 to 415. What's up, 213? Michael Jeffries, what up? I see you still representing them breadwinners. That's what's up, bro. I'll make it up to you one day soon. In 2023, I'll make it up to you. The Fly Girl. I'm not used to seeing that name. What's up, Fly Girl? Casper, what up? But apparently the stories have been cracking, and I am under the assumption that gang history is played out. I mentioned it to two other people, and they agreed the gang history has officially played out. Now, I'm going to rule out officially and substitute that word with temporarily. Yeah, I, I, oh, Henny guy's up in here. Wait a minute. Henny, somebody then became 213 and Henny guy's back. What the hell's going on here? But so I think what's going on is what I said was going to happen. The market got flooded and people just started interviewing everybody. And now it's less interesting and the facts are all mixed up. And so that's what I believe is going on. A lot of people's numbers are down, but the stories are up. The story numbers is what's cracking. So stories are trending right now. And I feel it. I feel it. Because it was kind of a little bit of pressure of finding out who you want to interview next. Make sure they fit the criteria of a KMAC video. And then with all this hatred, people getting mad at the Michael Jordan video. Then you got these other dudes on other websites that's supposed to be on my team that's coming after me. And it like left a, a bad taste in everybody's mouth. So now everybody's feeling the effects of that bullshit. Like, like we can't do nothing without hating on each other. Story's been good. Nobody's hating on nobody's stories. Everybody's watching and reminiscing and the numbers are up. Numbers are up here. The likes are up. The views are up. The comments are up. Like, why would I do anything else? We need a little fee story. I mean, I can't help you with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to respect the homie's wishes. The homie does not want to be mentioned. The homie does not want no recognition or no fame. The homie has cited that other people that got the fame and wrote books and was on the news have been executed. So he don't want to be a part of that. And he wishes you guys would respect that. And then maybe one day he will want to tell a story. But for now, he don't want to be mentioned. So I'm going to respect that. Lattimore Nelson, little no good, rest in peace. Uh, I don't know if I could tell some of my no good stories, but I do got one. I've been trying to figure out how to how to actually present that story. Uh, there was an incident where, you know, we wasn't all getting along. And me and one of the homies, y'all don't want to give up too much info in case I do the story. Me and one of the homies was going to Vegas, and he pops up. And no goods in the car. And so me and no good got this me and Monster Cody thing going on where nobody wants to sit in the back. I mean, in the front. Nobody wants to sit in the front. 
and you know, one of them situations. So I've been thinking about telling that, but I got to figure out how do I tell it without hurting feelings or giving too much of the inner dealings of the hood. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I've, I've seen, I didn't watch the video, but I've seen that bone got interviewed, but I believe that was by one of the crazos from Raymond. And you know, I typed the Raymonds and the Tonyans on. You're talking about Bar Bartell? Is who talking about Bartell? Oh, <laughs> uh, you mean no good to do what you interview? No, nah, we never interviewed no good. No good got killed a couple years ago. That's what's up, James Hudson. Nah, Bartell ain't no no good. Sir Uncle Buck, let's see what he's talking about. Kev only won bronze medals when he played sports. <laughs> that's hilarious, man. Buck, that's a good one, Buck. Jay Ship, what up, homeboy? boy? What it do? No good was a man. He was a trip in the module, right? We used to go head up all the time in the module. No good was a funny dude, man. He was he was one of the comedians in the hood. Um, Buck come in talking crazy. That's all Buck does. Kevin, man, can we get a Mike Christian interview, please? I mean, you really gonna say please to me about a Mike Christian interview? I'm the one that should be saying please. Except I don't beg. I ain't too proud to beg. But Mike already knows I want to interview him. I talked to Mike way back when Melvin Hardy was being put to rest and told Mike what was up. So Mike knows what's up, but I, I can't make Mike do an interview. I can't even find Mike. Like He's in Dallas or Texas somewhere. And I don't know how or when we will ever cross paths. Wait a minute, what? Cash app, everybody chat when you hit big. Your friend got 800 just going with you. Kev, you know some Vato Slick? I know a Vato named Slick that's African American. I was thinking about bad news. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I called bad news, what, Saturday or Sunday? No, Saturday I called bad news, and I called Big Rick. And it's so funny because when I called bad news, he said he was already in the car on his way to see Big Rick. I said, that's crazy. I was thinking about both of y'all. Decided to call both of y'all, and y'all on your way to hook up. That's cool. Slick ain't no vato, he a Peru. Slick is a vato, that's a vato, homie. An African-American vato. Keep the stories coming, made me rewatch all of them. Oh, that's what's up, that's cool. Yeah, the numbers look good, man, I ain't gonna lie, you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't wanna jump in on a lot of trending topics, talking stupid and disrupting the culture for views so it's good that i could tell stories now and get views yeah that's cool that's what's up the next one all right, all right the lakers lost again that's the end of that win streak huh bro do you realize how long ago that was probably also his memory is probably not that good just reach out one more time dude mike christian Memory is great. He knows what's up. He talks to people in our circles. He knows what's up, bro. Lakers are going to make some trade. Who the hell are they going to get? It's me, bro. What's up, huh, boy? Oh, shit. I need to invite you and KB on at the same damn time. You should get S-Bomb from 40s on. I don't know S-Bomb, so... I don't have no contact on him. I have never spoken to him. Uh, so I don't know about that one either. Lakers 
Yeah, they need to make some trades, but I don't know who the hell they could trade for. Crystal, what up? Where is Shaniqua at? Watch your pop up. Where's Monique Hill at? Where are all the ladies at? Where's Western Ave at? Where's 415 Mammy at? Where's all the Northtown California people at? TPK, probably at home with his young girlfriend, chilling. Kyrie for Westbrook, that'll never happen. Kyrie for AD might happen. KD, they need to go get KD. New Jersey's sick of KD. Like his move to Seattle. I was telling one of my homeboys, if the Oakland A's come to Vegas, man, I'm there. I'm up in Oakland A's games. I'm going to see them whenever they play the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Dodgers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You go to A's games just to see the opponent. OG Steve, good looking out, man. Allerton in the house. What's up? Uh, I don't know what Penny Pincher story to tell. I don't have a whole lot. Uh, one that stands out is, I believe it was me and Roscoe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was me and Roscoe. We went to Penny Pincher late one night. And there was dudes hanging out in the parking lot. So, so what? Them the homies, right? So we pull up. And there's one fool. He got his burner and he's acting hard. And he's like, man, where y'all from? So we get to talking and chatting and Cause say, what they call y'all? So we tell him, what they call you? Now, I don't remember his name, but I'm going to try to give you a good idea of something similar. He said, he said something like, and I'm making these names up now, but he said something like, I'm little Earl dog, baby cat, Big Mac. And we was like, what the fuck? What? Like, nigga, how many names you got? He was like, one. Like, nigga, you just said like six names. Like, nigga, you might as well just be an embryo of somebody instead of being named after all these dudes to where you mixing names up and shit. That was a trip. I never seen that dude again. I always wonder what happened to that dude. But that was a trip, man. And that was that was before we started hearing all this, this new era type names, right? This had to be, I think, I, yeah, I was still in LA, so this this had to be like 04, maybe. 2004. We like, God, damn, this nigga got a million names mixed in one. I got family in the Bay, moved from LA to Richmond and East Oakland, got love for Northern California. Baby Faye Loxa, you better kick back, homie. Hiya, the fly girl. Who is the fly girl? Those that keep asking for Big Rick. The OG has said he doesn't like the way he sounds when he is interviewed. And I'm sure there's something he doesn't want to speak about. I'm sure Big Rick wouldn't speak about a whole lot of stuff because of the code that he came up under that he helped set president and he's just on another level so I don't see Rick speaking on a lot of things but Rick does speak the real and some stories that you don't hear every day so Rick really would be a good interview because he's going to say some things that wasn't said before and he's going to give some history that hadn't been told before what up Kim uh, what's what, what, what's the name dropping for Cam? What's that all about? Me and Roscoe was in CRC with Lil No. Really? Lil No Good and Roscoe was on the same yard? What year was that? I don't hear from you, Cam Mac, but I love you, cuz Harlem. Oh, that's uh my nephew. What up, homeboy? You don't hear from me? What well, shit? Kim can say the same thing. My grandkid, Abayamina, can say the same thing. Uh, my aunts and uncles can say the same thing. So, you know what I'm saying? 
My bad, my, but you know what? I don't talk to everybody in the family. I don't talk to a lot of people. I did talk to your daddy today, though. I heard from your daddy today. But yeah, man, don't, don't, don't get in your feelings. Don't be butt hurt that you ain't heard from my. It's a lot of people ain't heard from me. You know what I'm saying? I got other nephews and nieces too that don't hear from me. Like, I just don't stay in communication with all the family. Like, unless it's time for a get together for us all to come together, somebody's birthday or a holiday, a trip, then I mean, hey, and that's cool you talk to a little kid. That's your cousin. That's what's up, man. But we on Mac here the maniac time right now. We ain't on family time, nephew. You got my number though. You know how to text me. You change phone numbers like I change underwear, nigga. That might be once a year, you know. So, no, that's like every day, sometimes twice a day, nigga. How many phones you got? Yo, what's up, Kim? Do you have any crazy stories about going to Lock High School in Watts? I got one crazy story about going to Lock High School in Watts. I've never been. <laughs> never been. That's the one crazy story I got about Lock and Watts. Kev, a deadbeat uncle. See what I'm saying, man? See what you done got started? You done got all these dudes, only one dude, but it's about to be more, calling me a deadbeat uncle. And then, nigga, you come in here with your real name, like, nigga, why you can't have an alias? Why you can't have your moniker from Harlem? Why you can't just make up some shit like everybody else? Why your name can't be walking down Crenshaw with a shotgun? Why your name can't be Lil Mont? Why you got to come in here with your real name, nigga? Like, you, you want to joke and have fun with me, nigga? Come on, let's go. Let's do this shit in front of the world, fool. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. <laughs> like this nigga can't even troll nobody like he can't even talk no shit right like nigga it's going right back to you for real for real like there's no deciphering for the FBI or for hate crimes or or threat over the computer like cut straight to the taste that's his real name we'll be at your house in an hour Kev told his nephew he'd be back. He going to the store to get some milk and he never. <laughs> Y'all niggas crazy, man. Y'all know Kev Matt can't handle late night. <laughs> I need a drink. Mm. Mm. Ooh, and nothing like strawberry so substitute for hard alcohol. Shout out from Cambodia Town, East Side, Long Beach, L. How you do the B? B C. Hey Kev, how about them bucks? Beach balls, what up, homeboy? What you smoking and sniffing tonight? What's the hottest drug in Florida right now? Because whatever it is, the Bucks offensive line is on that shit. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line is intoxicated, bro. Who remembers Jake Capone from Gardena's Shotgun? His music is still go hard, okay? Nephew done checked out. Nephew said, oh, shit, let me go change my name. Nephew said, I'm out of here before Unc get on Nephew said, I'm done. Like, nephew probably was with a girl. And now he feels like this nigga owned me too much. I can't, I can't be the butt of his jokes in front of my girl, right? Were you able to see Strawberry play at Crenshaw? I never went to see Strawberry play. But like I said before, uh, I used to see him on the news all the time. So it felt like I was watching him. Sometimes you could hear the crowd from where I lived at. Uh, 
when I lived in Florida, they were on bath salts. Oh, wow. Damn, you lived in Florida too? You need to change your area code to Florida's area code. It's me, bro. What's up? You still drinking? What you up to, homeboy? Yo, Kel Mac. You still talk to Baby Gangster and Melly Mel from Compton. I still talk to Melly Mel every blue moon. I haven't spoken to Baby Gangster in probably since Goob seen an alien shit. I, I haven't spoken to Baby Gangster. Kev, did you used to eat at Tails? At Tails? A couple of times, yeah. Kev, you got to do a story on white boy Eric, who used to run with Roscoe. Which Roscoe? You're going to build me two model cars? That's what's up, man. I wonder if you are as good as Skunk Dog. Like, cause Skunk Dog, wait a minute. Is that your real name, too? Like, what's up with you black Irishmen? Do y'all all use your real name? But, yeah, uh, I wonder if you was as good as Skunk Dog at building a model car. Skunk Dog is fresh, man, and his car is hot. His car is dry fast. Skunk Dog's a beast. I told Skunk Dog he could advertise. I mean, them model cars he got are fly, bro. Triple Tut, I really don't remember, to be honest. You hear different names, but Big Roscoe, rest in peace. You might be talking about little Roscoe. Big Roscoe's in a wheelchair. Do you feel he just called himself Big Roscoe because he was so big? That's all. Irish are supposed to be black. I don't know. <laughs> Who are you gonna interview next from Compton? I don't plan on doing no interviews from nobody whether it's Compton, LA, any of that, I, I really don't. Like I said, it seems to me and the two people I just spoke to that them gang interviews have played out, man. There's too many people that we never heard of or didn't leave an impact on, on the genre are being interviewed and it's just watering everything down. So the numbers are down, people's interests are down. Um, nobody's getting wired up about interviews no more. So I don't know, man. I mean, you might still like them. I don't know. It might be a whole bunch of people that still like them, but that's how I feel. And that's how two people I talk to feel. So, I, and the numbers, like I said, the, the numbers support what I'm saying. Yeah, G Perico's cool. I, I uh, text G Perico the other day. Mumpy would be good, Mump, Mump, but Cartoon's going to get Mumpy. So we're going to let Cartoon get his cousin, and, and that's that. I'm not going to beg Mumpy to come up on here. Mumpy already know what it is. He he know y'all waiting on him. So I'm going to leave that to Mumpy, man. Now, now see what I'm saying? Miss 213 said the same thing. People like the stories. People are really into the stories now. The stories are trending. The stories are trending. I understand that, Crystal, but even like with me, people people just haven't been wanting to do no interviews lately. Like the, the whole swagger of that is like gone. Like you feel me? Weirdo's been cool. I never hear anything of them like the rest of Inglewood. I don't either. I don't even know if they're still around. I don't know if they they recruited. I don't I don't know what happened to Weirdo's. 
I don't hear about them either. And I don't see them hit up on the wall like I used to. Either. Cartoon crack off the gang stories. Yeah, for real. Everybody said the stories of fire, man. Already had corrupt on here. Corrupt didn't do no numbers. And corrupt had a cool story about President Trump smoking weed. Trump getting high with them. No numbers. Then you gotta remember, like, see, see, here's the thing. A lot of guys you guys want, they ain't they ain't what y'all think they are. You're talking about rappers. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about you're talking about guys that that, that they big thing, they first thing is rapping, music, industry, right? And so we welcome that. We like that. We accept all of that. But that ain't the core of this channel. And that's not what everybody really is looking for, right? People are looking for the next Monster Cody. The next, what's my man name from Park Village? Rebo. The next Rockhead. People are looking for guys like that. The next Mumpy. Uh, I don't think it did numbers. Maybe it did later. I don't know. It didn't do numbers back then. Though. Nugget. Nugget was a good one, right? I remember when y'all asked Big U if Corrupt was really from the set and seemed surprised when he said, yeah. <laughs> we seem surprised. Oh, all right. You sure, baby? S Mac didn't sound surprised. Q does numbers. Q does numbers, and then he got his haters too. But you're not popping if you ain't got no haters, though. Nugget interviews are good. Nugget is a natural, and you got to remember, Nugget was doing good interviews before YouTube, before. Everybody got wind of doing these type of history interviews, right? I don't have no four six neighborhood interviews lined up. I think the two to go to would be Hot Dog Rest in Peace and BJ Rest in Peace. Nugget is entertaining for sure, for sure, for sure. This channel leans more toward history, not just anybody that was in the streets. There you go. Ah, uh, that's a good way to explain that. Crazo interviews was good, yeah. Crazo's interviews were a change of pace from the older guys to a younger guy, from an older guy's memory to a younger guy's perspective. And Crazo laughs like dudes that dudes that tell stories and tell jokes and laugh. They bring a different face to it, to the camera, right? And Crazo is that. I'm not trying to be weird, but are you 50 years old? Because you look young as hell. I am 50 years old. And some people say I look young, but I damn sure don't feel young. And you got some of these cats that come on here and get their weight up. And they turn. Hey, great point, bro. Um, that's not a thought in my head, but it's very accurate. That's a very accurate statement, Mr. Rodney Scott. Another real name? Like, y'all niggas ain't never been in trouble before. Y'all don't have bill collectors after you. You niggas don't have women uh, looking for child support or none of that. Because y'all niggas all come in here with your government. Pretty Boy, too, gives good perspective. Yeah, Pretty Boy is another good one. Pretty Boy, Miz, right? King Leo, what up? I think Big Jesse James spoke on Royal Burger. They used to be in Thrift Town Liquor on Lossy Internet. Uh, good looking out, Franny. 
Uh, how is Black Sam and you? That would do numbers if done correctly. I know we're not a gang member. I think a Black Sam interview would go with anybody. I don't know what's going on with Black Sam. We don't communicate, so I can tell you what's going on with him or if he would be willing to do an interview on the channel or what. But I believe he is spending time taking care of Nipsey stuff and the documentary on Nipsey. All right, so check this out. Are you new here? Are you new? Like you a new viewer, new subscriber? Like how long have you been here? I grew up on Eileen. We got a song and I talk about Eileen all the time and all the stories and all of that. My best memories growing up there, Man, there's so many, dog. Just pick a story and listen to the story. Kim, Kim, what year did you move on Eileen? Do you remember what year you moved on Eileen? What was the first grade you went to from Eileen? <laughs> Baby face, cut it out. Crush can get Sam, all right? That's what's up. That don't mean Sam want to do an interview, though. Sixth grade? Damn, Kim. You a lie. You a damn lie. Sixth grade. So you had me by seven years. So if you 12, I would be five. Hell no. You crazy. We got pictures, fool. In 1971 and 1972 with the dates on them. We got pictures, Kim, with dates on them. So you wrong. You wasn't in no damn sixth grade. Kim, what about Papa LQ? Uh, Papa LQ went on Melly Mel's channel, and we're going to leave Papa LQ on Melly Mel's channel. And there's a small history behind that. And so I'm not going to revisit that in public without first addressing it with Melly Mel or Papa LQ in public. And so, yeah, you know, a lot of dudes that do these interviews, they do it because somebody want to interview them, right? And then some do it for the fame. Like they want to be on every channel. They want their face and name seen everywhere possible. And I don't like that. I don't like to have somebody that's been on all the other platforms come on our platform. Like I'm not here to support your reputation or give you validation. We here to hear your story. We're not here to get you to repeat shit that you done already told everywhere else. And we already know about, like, I want to ask you some questions that haven't been asked before that we don't know about so we can get to know you, like, crystal clear. But if we hear everybody else asking you questions, we already know about you. And, and so, yeah, you know. Salute, big Kev. That camo hoodie look nice, my brother. That, I need a hat to go with this shit, though, right? I need a hat, bro. I actually need a bigger one. Like, this fits me so small. Like, make me look small. Southside Compton, what up? We already interviewed Charleston White, bro. Like, I don't know when you came here or how long you've been here. We interviewed Charleston White before the West Coast knew who a Charleston White was. Kev approached that didn't like the other channels.
I don't even know what the Las Vegas Athletics hat looked like. Are you talking about the Oakland A's moving to Vegas? Well, here's my thing about Ayatollah Marv. Now, I'm not going to say I wouldn't interview him, but I'm going to say it like I said it once before. When he first hit the YouTube, the, the internet, the airwaves, everybody and their mama never heard of him. Everybody from Compton never heard of him. Within a week, everybody in Compton knew this dude. Like, so that kind of makes me like, do I really want to interview him? Because I haven't forgot when nobody knew him. Now everybody knew him. I mean, that that's kind of weird for me. I'm not saying it's weird for him or for y'all, but that's weird for me. Like now we need to interview him because he's the most sought after original oldest Pyru. Who they were saying wasn't even around when Pyru started. Who they were saying was too old to be gang banging with teenagers. But now we want to interview him. So that's kind of weird to me. Like, I, it don't move me is what I'm saying. That interview doesn't move me. Oh, okay. You, the Stutterbox interview, you approach that interview different from the rest of the channel. Not to mention you didn't ask Gang bang questions. Oh, good looking up, man. Yo, Ken Mac, have you ever heard the YouTuber with Sean Campbell? He accused Afro Bimbada. I did hear that. I don't know him. I never watched him, but I did hear. I did hear of that. Austin, Texas, man. Austin, like for real. What about interviewing some of the young members like Monty B? I talked to Monty B probably what once a year, maybe. He texts me the other day. I text back. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Skip Nam interviewed him already. Uh, Alonzo interviewed him already, and he has a unique history because his name. He got a name over there. He won their reptables. Uh, but I don't know, man. He's he's not he he's not really the prototypical KMAC video type of guy, right? Because he's too young. He's too young. And it, it, you know, he's cool. He cool. He cool though. I know what you're saying, Austin, Texas. I got you. I understood exactly what you said. Too Pretty Kenny is funny. Okay, now y'all all want the young ones. All right. All right, I'll go get a young one. And when he get his head blown up, y'all be sure to put the money up to bury him and cover me when they start saying he got killed because of Kid Mac. He went on Kid Mac videos and got smoked. Kid Mac got him smoked. Kid Mac knew not to interview that young nigga. Kid Mac put him out there. Kid Mac using him. Kim Mac knew he was active. Y'all don't understand what comes with all this shit. Like y'all, like a few of y'all try to do with the little doc interview. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. You don't want no frontline type soldiers on here. You come on here, you frontline. What you gonna talk about? Who you smoked? Who you gonna smoke? And then the police going to see you. They're going to pull you over because they know you got a burner on you. Oh, that's Kel Mac's fault. Kel Mac knew he shouldn't have interviewed that nigga on Inglewood Avenue. Time that nigga left, he got pulled over with a burner. Time he hit Sentinella, he got gunned down. Kel Mac set him up. Come on, man. Come on, man. So certain, certain things... Like, like a few people said, there's other channels that can do that. We we can let other channels take care of that. Like everybody don't have to be CAMAC material or CAMAC interview. We're not even getting interviews right now. We're not even getting them in. Quite frankly, 
I'm not even looking for no interviews right now. I'm going to keep y'all satisfied with the story. Y'all wanted stories? You got stories, and it's a perfect fit to boom. West Coast rappers, a lot of them are imitators. They fake, no reputation, no work. Uh, all of them rap about is having is having these Dracos and AK-47s and then get gunned down. Like they never had a Draco when they get smoked. They never had an AK-47 out when they get popped. All right? Keep your formula, KF. Cats just want to see self-destruction and messiness. Yeah, that's kind of true. Too. These people fascinated with our culture and don't even know. Don't even know three times. Don't even know. Like this shit can become so controversial because it's so political and everybody looking to get that notch on you. They looking for you to fail so they can just jump on you, put their foot on your neck, right? And I try to avoid that type of shit, man. That's why this channel is different from the... I feel like y'all putting pressure on me now to, to screw up. Like, y'all looking for a way for me to fail now. That's how I feel right now. Y'all wanted stories. Y'all got stories, and the stories are working out. Let's enjoy it. Let's appreciate that for a little while. And then we can do something different. I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying all rappers are fake. I'm saying when you just say rappers, what rapper? Gangster rapper? Uh, a house party dancing rapper? What? What kind of rapper do you want? Because a lot of them haven't come from the streets, bro. And I'm telling you that. I, I'm just trying to tell you, bro. These, these, they don't gang bang. What? I mean, this ain't a rap channel. How about that? This ain't a hip hop channel. Is that good enough? Is that a good answer? Is that pleasing enough to quit asking for rappers to be interviewed? I interviewed some real rappers. G Perico, G Malone, my man out of San Diego. Even we even did corrupt. You know what I'm saying? We've we done some rappers. This ain't hip hop. Y'all got what's that uh what's that channel that y'all got that that goes viral all the time? Nipsey, we interviewed Nipsey. Yeah, you gotta pay for old articles, man. Them they in the archives. Man, they're going to blame me for anything, bro. Somebody asked me the other day, have anybody in these stories called and talking shit? I'm like, no, but everybody in these stories know I'm telling the truth. And some of them know they snitches. Yeah, World Star Hip Hop. You can find your favorite rapper in World Star Hip Hop. I'm like, they don't want, they don't want to wake up that sleeping giant. Like, they know I got some paperwork for my cases and probably their case too. They, they don't want to wake me up like that. So they just quiet. They quiet as they should be. They're real stories. I'm not disrespecting nobody. I ain't putting nobody down. I ain't dissing nobody's hood or nothing like that. I keep it respectful. And I would hope anybody mentioning the stories feel respected and respected. Well, Jason didn't didn't never come through when I tried to interview Jason, so that's that. Uh, I don't know how many times I could say that I don't chase after people. Good looking out, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, Banker T. Yeah, that'd be cool. No, I, I've never ran across Taco. The passenger did. The passenger and Taco was in uh, county jail together. I always wondered, did Taco know who the passenger was? Did we know who that dude was? But a lot of people get confused Taco from Inglewood family 
that I was into had to be with, with the taco from NHP. Two different sets, two different people, two different ethnicities. Oh, you seen the story about your pops? What day? Wait, 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 wait. I like the story about my pops. I didn't know that was the day he met my moms. You schooling me on something. What day did he meet your moms? Before he wrecked? Before that nigga eyes popped out? I think he met your mom while he was in prison, no? Or before he went back to prison, right? I remember he had pictures of her. My brother's still locked up, and I don't know if my brother gonna do no interviews. Yeah, I know Big Deacon, Little Deacon, Baby Deacon, yeah. Tacoma, no, I've never been to Tacoma. <laughs> man, you crazy right there, man. And locked himself in a rider moving van. That's funny. Yep, definitely the youngest. <laughs> what was the Las Vegas strip like in the 80s? Is it better then or now? I don't know what better is. It was, I was young then, and so I, I could really feel and smell the air. The atmosphere was different. Seemed like it was more money around back then than it is now. And back then, everything was organic. Now everything is, with modern technology, everything is different. Like, there's no real money falling off the slot machines no more. Like you can't put real money on the crap tables no more. So there's a lot of things that are different. You couldn't have kids in the casino back then. Now, like I said, everything's different now. I think back then was was funner and better. I think now is more family oriented, I guess. I didn't know football from A Trey, but but we used to talk on the phone text and write letters because football caught a case and somebody I know told on him. And so I was trying to get that worked out so he could get football up out of prison, but nothing ever manifested from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen Michael Womack probably maybe 2017. I think Oh, on Adams at a club on Adams. That that'll be a good story to tell. Although nothing happens, that would be a good story. Uh, I meet this fine girl. This she's fine, right? And she tells me, but I, I'm just at home in the spot, right? I'm not going nowhere, so I'm kind of g'd up. Not kind of. I'm really g'd up like a throwback gangster, right? But that's just something I put on. I'm not going nowhere. And this broad wants to go out. She said, come on, let's go have a couple of drinks and we come back home. So I'm like, all right. She takes me on Adams. So we go on Adams. And I'm like, damn, I'm tripping. And I go up in the club. So I'm sitting in the club. And Michael Womack walks up. Michael, Mike is kind of like he got on this like checkered shirt sort of like a penalty too now. But Mike walks up and we like, oh shit, what's up? You know, Adams. And um I can't think of the name of them streets. But then we had like two other homies come up in there. And so that was cool because you know how about at first K M V personal fight story? How about a first K M V personal First, Brian Watson, good looking out, bro. Appreciate it. 
of earth? Man, what are we going back to? Second grade, third grade, fourth grade? Kim, man, when did you first hear about the 7 1 game? I couldn't even tell you, man. To be honest, I don't remember. That whole area kind of messes with my memory. I, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. The baby Kim may ever get out. No, he still got life sentence. I used to go to the court on Adams. It was cool then. Your first fight. I'm saying when? Elementary school, junior high school, high school, county jail, prison, what? Uh, which first fight? Kevin, okay, well, you spoke to Big Craig Munson. Yeah, Big Craig Munson called me a couple days ago. The rapper Afro Man claimed, hey, Trey, yes, sir. Why didn't you tell the white lady to stop calling you boy? Because I wanted to get some of that money. That's why. Now, I could have now I could have caused a situation, a scene, and got kicked out. Or I could have sat there and won all my money back and went home. I don't think, like, like you say you this gambler and you so successful and you so patient. Imagine being at the crap table that night and having patience and winning that kind of money. Like, that should be right up your alley. Like, that just be some shit you would have did. And you're going to ask me why did I not ask her? I don't know, go, go young DJ. Bro, it seemed like you would have did the same thing. School bus story, I uh, probably got a few of those maybe. Most money you won in one night off the dice scale, 112000 multiple times. I wonder if kids were bad then, too. Hell yeah, they was bad, especially the ones that couldn't speak English. I would have them teaching me Spanish. You don't remember me telling that story? I learned to tell them, siéntese, callate, por favor, uh, and, and and you know yeah they taught me they taught me Spanish driving the bus. You need to tell the something flave flap flaves at the crap table story flavor flav. Oh yeah yeah I, I ran across flavor flav crazy ass Dennis Rodman crazy ass Franco Harris um, Harrison that was on the Patriots uh, quite a few boxers. Quite a few boxers. Did you ever gamble with PC or 58th and Normandy? PC. I don't remember a PC. I don't think I had no fights in kindergarten. Probably didn't have no fights in first grade or second grade. But coming third and fourth and fifth grade, yeah. Oh, uh, I ran across Phil Ivey at the crap day. But that's another asshole. Phil Ivey just think the world is his. Like he can do and say whatever he want. But Phil Ivey has some paper. Henry Tillman, that might be a good interview. Henry, matter of fact, Henry Tillman would be a good interview if you know a little bit about his history already. Have you ever met dudes that still claim full trade Hoover? My bunky was a full trade Hoover. My Sally was a full Trey Hoover. Uh, them the last full Trey Hoovers I ran across. Oh yeah, Dr. J. I ran across Charles Barkley at the win. Who else? Michael Jordan, I think at Taj Mahal in New Jersey. Who else? Uh, I gamble with a lot of people, man, over the years. Like, I really have, for real. What's that chick? What's that chick? Uh, what's the fat, fat white chick name? Uh, Roseanne Barr. I gamble with Roseanne Barr one day. I wanted to choke her. I, I wanted to just commit a murder right there at the Stardust, at the crap table. Because I'm at the table. And I'm losing. I can't win a bet. I'm probably losing about three racks at the at the crap table. 
and she comes up out of the show with some shit, and she got a crew. She got like a five man, five woman crew, and they all come to the table. First of all, y'all crowd on this table. Second of all, I want to. I want to. Table is going fast because I'm losing my money. I want to win my money back real quick or lose it all and get the hell out of it. And she comes and gets next to me. And she said, how's the table? I said, the table, cold. She said, oh, well, we're fixing to warm it up. You know how she got that, that weird accent. Well, we're fixing to warm it up. And I'm saying in my mind, you know, my mind is always talking to me. I'm like, she ain't about to warm shit up. And they pull out their little money. And, and it's funny how rich people be so tight with their money. Like their fingers are so tight, like the money is not going to leave their hand. And then I think about broke people like us from the ghetto. We get a bunch of money in our hand. It's so loose. Like we just throwing it everywhere. We throw it at strippers. We throw it on the crap table. We throw it on the cement in the backyard. We just throw the money away. They hold the money tight. So I'm looking at them and I'm mad at that. Like they don't even want to let the money go. They slowing up the table. And she tells, she tells one of her friends, a female, you shoot the dice. I lose on her. I lose on the next person. I'm so hot. And Roseanne Barr got these chips up on the counter. And she's not really betting that much. And she's saying, oh, it's okay. The dice are going to get hot. I wanted to say, bitch. I ain't got no more money for the table to get hot. Like, it's over for me. Man, I want to just strangle her right there. I was so hot, man. I was super hot. See, Breeze, good looking out. I remember some dude, he was skinny like Snoop Dogg, and he was laying down for who was bigger than him. It ain't about the size. It's the technique at the end of the day. So, oh, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. I can name a few skinny people that can fight. Knockouts. We got the first time I met Big U. I want to say, I want to say 85, 86, maybe 84, 85, 86, somewhere up around there. But we didn't get cool until later. Uh, Cowboy, he was a little kid. Cowboy wasn't, he was a little kid when I first met him. So that story may be coming up pretty soon. I know he's mentioning the next video he's mentioned, but it's not mentioned that I just met him. It's mentioned how he became Kevin. I already answered that question. I have not been to Tacoma. I don't plan on going to Tacoma, but who knows what the future holds. Was there <laughs> ever been a time another hood try to set up shop in the 60s? Yeah, four Trey Gangsters. Five Trey Avalons. Uh, v and G's. Mm. Offhand, then the ones that come to mind. What's your best memories from hanging out with Cowboy from 60? Again, maybe that'll come later down the line. Kev, growing up, what hood you hated going through the most? I don't know. When you say hated, I don't know. I have to really feel that question. Hated? I don't know if I could say I hated going through a hood. Really? I, 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 I don't know, bro. That I hated going through a hood? I don't know. Have you ever seen the movie Dead Homies? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. 
which hood had the best fighters? I don't know, but the sixties had a lot of fighters. So I'm sure our adversaries had them too. I think the better question, what hood did you try to stay out of at all costs? At all costs, probably none. But where I didn't want to get caught, Nickerson Gardens, Jungle, Hoover's, um, VNGs. So probably those, right? West Side Piru, I had uh had some incidents over there when I was a bus driver. Denver Lanes was always Denver Lanes was always like I thought of them as like the toughest bloods on the west side. So you don't want to get caught in Denver Lane hood, but actually and factually, from my experience, like in Denver Lane hood, they were really only concentrated in one area. So if you're not in that one area, it's like you're not going to see no red. You're not going to get hit up. So my experience with the Denver Lanes, and this stretches a long time, they you could get away with going through the DLBs as opposed to some of the other hoods, but they were definitely with the business. I don't know, I, I've tried, I've tried, I've tried to get to Sint Towns. I don't think I'm gonna get no Sint Towns and they're pushing out their own documentary now. So it's, it's like once their documentary come out, there's no need anybody interviewing no Pomona OG from Sint Town now. Goob and them and Mafia and all them, they they may have some, but when you talk about Pomona and you're not from Pomona, Sintown and 456 are the two biggest sets that you hear about. So those would be the most uh, wanted, sought after interviews, Trey 57 and 456. All the rest probably have interesting histories, good stories probably, can tell some good stories of going up against Trey 57 and 456. But I'm not going after Sintown no more. I, I've tried enough, man. I, I don't know what it's supposed to take for me to get somebody to do an interview. Like, I'm just not begging and chasing people for no interview. Like, if you don't get you rich, like, I'm not going to get no life changing money off of it, right? I'm not going to get no accolades or no awards off of it, right? And we pretty much, we got a nice, we got a nice library going. We got a nice set of interviews behind us now. And if anybody don't want to be a part of that, hey, I'm just as happy as they are that they don't want to be a part of it. And that's just how it is, man. Uh, just to keep it 100. Wait a minute. Somebody said we only got 200. We got 270 people watching. Fact check. And only 48 likes. What? Oh, no, 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 no. Ain't no Mac Ends and Maniacs up in here with 48 likes. That's some bullshit. Y'all go out of here. I'm going to give y'all six seconds. You know how Milk say, take 7.4 seconds to get your head right. Y'all take 6.0 seconds. Exit the chat, click like, and come back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Welcome back. How many likes we got now? Because we got 275 people now. Okay, the likes went up now. The likes are higher now. You know what? Aiton probably will be a good interview. You know, I got, I got like, I interviewed Aiton before, and it just wasn't a good interview. And his backyard was real tore up. And, you know, Aiton wasn't, he was dressed like a mechanic, I guess. So 
it just wasn't the prettiest interview ever. And because of the type of tape I used back then, it wasn't preserved. So I can't like put that interview together and throw it out there. But yeah, we got Aethan in a nice yard and clean him up. He would be a great interview because he's so knowledgeable. He goes way back. And not only can Nathan talk about low ride, Nathan can talk about Raymond Washington and he can talk about the, the Hoover family and he can talk about the Black Karate Federation. So you're absolutely right. I don't know who you are, Eric Dunn, but Aethan definitely will be a great interview if you know the history of Aethan. See, this is what I'll be saying. Some dudes, they just want to interview somebody because they heard the name or because they in the low ride, right? I'm not talking about you, Eric Dunn. I'm talking about people with channels. But they don't even know the, the well-rounded history of these guys like I may know or S. Mac may know. So he's much more than a, a, a person that built low riders and fixed low riders and put hydraulics in low riders. This dude is, he knows about the gang history. He knows about karate. He knows all that. So if you interview Aethan, you got to dig off into all that, man. Aethan was right there, but what's the school, bro? It's not Bethune. What's the school over there? Edison. He was right by Edison. I went over there, dog. I'm telling you, I interviewed him in his backyard, man. You know what? I would love to come to Hawaii and interview the Samoan Crips there. However, I got a disclaimer. I'm going to only come if y'all got Roscoe for Park Village ready for me first. You give me Roscoe from Park Village to do an interview, because I talk to him all the time, but he ain't ready to do no interview. He ain't trying to do no interview. I told him I'll come to Hawaii and interview him, me and s -Mac. And he didn't want to do that. So if you can get him, then I'll come interview him and all the rest of y'all. I never heard of ice water, bro. Where would I know ice water from? I would have to put Skip Townsend up there. I was surprised at how much Skip Townsend knew. Uh, actually, surprised how much Cutes knows, to be honest. So I, I would say them too. You know what? That's a good question. And just so you know, I got a video about that coming up. That's actually one of the videos that YouTube won't allow me to put up right now. They won't let me monetize it. So I didn't put it up yet. I'm trying to peel it in a week or so, maybe. They'll, they'll let me put it up. But I left out the part about the VNGs. Yes, we had a, probably a two-day truce with the VNGs. And we got pictures from that day, too. So, yeah, 1992. We had interactions with the VNGs. We went into Van Ness Park and we kicked it for two days and talked and then it was over with. I don't know when I'm coming back to Dago, but hopefully soon. I got some good news and some more good news. My daughter came home Saturday. So my youngest daughter is back home Saturday. My other daughter is expecting twins in April. I'm hoping they come on my birthday, but in April, we're expecting two more grandkids. So they are fraternal twins. And so I'm going to have four grandbabies. Yeah, two days. Our thing with the Hoovers lasted one day. And same with the H-Tray gangsters and everybody else. Two days. Yeah, 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 man. Thanks a lot, man. This is, like I said, I hope it's on my birthday. I hope she delivered on my birthday. I would love to share my birthday with a grandkid or two, right? Or how about the day before or the day after? 
That way they can spend a night with me and we can celebrate them both, right? Uh, you know what? I've I've heard. I've only heard. I wasn't around to witness, but I've heard of some sixties. I mean, of some VNGs that turn sixties. Some reputable sixties, but that was before my time, so I can't confirm it. I've only heard several people say it's true. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Thanks, Kim. Appreciate it. I got more. Who would have thought I'd have more grandbabies than you? Who do you think is deeper between the Hoovers and the Ford Hoovers? Have you heard or met any Hilltop Crips? Of course, heard of them. Absolutely. Past that you got will never forget. A past that I got that I will never forget. She gotta be with the H Rank Gangsters. So you didn't want to kick it in the valley or you didn't know nobody? Who, who's that for? Kevin, okay, Matt, when is the first time you met Monster Cody when I interviewed him? You talking about face-to-face -face when I interviewed him? We had talked on the phone and we had emailed prior to meeting up. This is the second live that I came on and y'all act like this is Q&A. Like y'all hit me with a million questions. How about a conversation instead of all these questions? I told you I feel under pressure tonight. What year did 5-5 become neighbors? Uh, I had this debate with a couple homies, so I'm going to just say I thought around 89. Different people say different things, though, so I don't know. What about Greg Batman Davis? Yeah, Batman's still out. Batman didn't want to do an interview with me before, and Batman wanted to charge me for pictures. I've never talked to Batman since then. Um, I was hanging with some Q102s, and they were saying Batman is a homie. They could take me to Batman and get him to do an interview. We rolled around, went to a couple of spots that he hang at, and we didn't see him. And that's the end of that. Never, never hooked up or talked to Batman again. I don't even know how the hell I met Big Keith Cross, but somehow I met him. And I had an Airbnb in Westchester. And he caught the bus. He caught the RTD up Manchester, straight up Manchester from Hoover's to Marina Del Rey or Playa Del Rey, actually, and got off the bus, and he came up. We did an interview, and I walked in. I think I, I, I walked and met him at the bus stop, and then I walked him back to the bus stop. Because like I do everybody, like I did the same with Keith Cross, I told him, I got to walk you back to the bus stop. I got to make sure you leave safe. I don't want nothing to happen to you on my watch. And then people think that I did something to you. So I walked into the bus stop. and But I don't remember. He he must have reached out to me. I I don't remember, to be honest. I have no I, I don't remember. How did you meet young Sinbad of Inglewood family? You mean old Sinbad? Which one? The dark one or the one in Vegas? The dark one or the one that said that Kanye West was a snitch and got shot seven times. 
You remember the 60 Thunderdome? Can you go in on that? Of course I remember. I actually I actually filmed one of the Thunderdomes. Well, I didn't film it, but it was my camera. One of the homies, I think Lil Smurf, actually filmed the Thunderdome in 1992. So I see it all the time when I'm going through old footage, of course. And there was some good stories, man. There was some good fights at the Thunderdome. Some rat packs and head ups and everything. I've been mistaken by from someone from another gang. Uh, South Los thought I was from Hoover. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Which, which snitching statement? Hit me to what you're talking about, Jay Ship. <laughs> For sure, I'm from Bounty Hunter Watts. We seen that and lined it up just like that. Oh, yeah, all right. That's what's up. West Coast Thunderdomes is truly unique. How about how about that guy that said y'all can invest in a four-team parlay? And remember, I said I don't know about that Bear Miami game. The Bears kind of scare me. Well, the Bears covered the spread by half a point, unless dude say he met money line. But then I told him that Lion Packer game. Uh uh, I don't like that, bro. Remember I said the black and blue division, that's tough. And boom, the Lions beat the Packers. I'm telling you, man, yeah, I got some parlays for you if you want them, but some of them easy games ain't as easy as y'all thought, right? I think I gave Skunk Dog five out of five. I don't know if they covered the spread, but I'm pretty sure I gave Skunk Dog five out of five. Or was it five out of six or four out of five? But I think I gave him five out of five on the money line. I don't know about the point spreads. Yo, Kim Mac, are you still in touch with OG Frog from Bounty? Frog texts me from time to time. Frog, Frog's on another page, though. Frog, Frog is speaking Frog facts. And Frog is working on his book. So Frog is deep into studying and getting his facts right doing some studying in history to make sure his book is accurate. So uh, we don't actually have normal conversations. Our conversation is, why is this dude lying? Why is that dude lying? I'm going to put this dude out. I'm going to let the real out. I'm going to piss a couple dudes off and stuff like that. So I stopped betting hockey for some reason. I like to part. It's hard for me to win on hockey. I don't, I don't mess with hockey. Hockey got to be a straight bet to me or in game. I can't parlay hockey. Right now, I can't parlay anything but these videos. So I'm trying to parlay some more stories and find out why YouTube is tripping on me, though. Shay, I don't have no idea why they say ain't no Crips in Ingle. People say anything on YouTube, social media. They say anything. I, I don't know. I don't have no idea. Shotty Mac. What's up? Good looking out, bro. Yo, Kev Mac, what? Frog thinks Nino Cappuccino is a snitch. Okay. You didn't see the video? That everybody been talking about? Who was the best street fighter from 60s? Crip Crazy. Crip Crazy. <laughs> C-Dog, Big C-Dog, Big Snoop Dog, Big Rick, Big U. I don't know, man. So many. It was, it was a lot on me. Big slip rock. I don't know how you not on no jumper. That's the next push for who channel? 
No jumper is the next push for who? Oh, I said I never kicked it in the valley. Well, I didn't have no females out there. I didn't have no homeboys out there and no family members out there. So wasn't no reason for me to be in the valley. Only time I went to the valley was if I was doing a school bus trip or I was trying to buy a car. Like, and it was too hot in the valley. Like, even though Vegas is hot, Vegas is the desert back then. I couldn't deal with no 100-degree heat. Wasn't nothing in the valley for me. You're right. If that's what I said, I'll say it right now. Wasn't nothing in the valley for me. Oh, Moncree had hands, too. We got a credit repair person in the comments, y'all. Tap in. As far as squabble, Ali Bob had a rep. Okay, all right, all right. But like I said, it's, it's so many. It, it's a lot. You can't name five. You know what I'm saying? You got to name about 25. I don't know, man. If they don't know about Mac now, shame on them, shit. Mac and S-Mac with the Mac videos or the Mac stories, the Mac music. If they don't know Mac now, they don't need to know Mac. What about Cal? Big Cal, rest in peace. What Cali Kiss say? I didn't see what Cali Kiss said. What she say? Let me see what Homegirl said. I don't even see a Cali Kiss comment. What the hell you read? Oh, you might be late when she was talking about the likes. Doe-Eye, Monkey said Doe-Eye, the Southpaw has squabble. Doe-Eye is so little in stature and height compared to somebody like Big Rick. Like Doe-Eye can have hands and, and be a beast. It would be hard for him to beat Big Rick, though. Cal has squabbles. Yeah, Cal has squabbles, but, you know, as Cal got older, Cal took some L's. One, that's my best fight story ever. Best fight story ever is I seen Big Cal get floored. A dude fired on Cal. Boom! And put Cal out. I had on Romeo's. And I was like, damn, not Cal. Like, Cal's a squabbler. And so I fired on dude. Boom! I, I might have two-pieced him. I don't remember. No, I think I one piece him. I slid when I hit him. Yeah, I want a piece of because I slid. Boom! And put him on the floor. And then commenced to knocking two more of his buddies up. And uh, about half the people there that night was dead. But there's still half that are witnesses to my best fight night in my life. Little Earl Dog would be one. Baby Slip Rock was there. Uh, Lil F Bone was there. Hen G. Henry G was there. I don't know if anybody else still living was there from our side. Happy C Day. Oh, Big Petey Wack. Shout out to Big Petey Wack. Happy birthday. I haven't talked to Big Cat now. Nah. Camac saved the day, cleaning up after they snuck the homie without question. Without question. <laughs> Cam was mean. I wasn't mean, fool. Tell us how I was mean, man. Please tell us how I was mean, dog. And little nigga, how, how young are you? I told y'all before, I didn't really have no skating ring room. I can't remember. Honestly, seriously, I can't remember being in any skating ring rumbles. If I was in one, probably one at a dice game. I don't remember rumbling at the skating ring, personally. Ken Mac, would you fight me back in the day? You think you could win the fight? Probably not. I mean, just... Keeping it 100, probably not. 
Would I squabble? Any, I mean, who wouldn't squabble anybody back then? You're going to squabble. That's an instinct. And you from 60, you better squabble. You have to squabble. My right eye get lazy as hell, ain't it? It's like the muscles in that mug is gone. But uh, as far as winning, nah, nah, nah. My homie probably beat me down so bad. Homies probably have to get him off me. Who had the best lowriders on the west side in the 80s? Damo Riders, I think, came out. 88, 89, probably 89. Damo Riders, they had some cool riders. The 111s, without question. The Harlem Crips. The Harlem Crips. That's my answer. The Harlem Crips. I don't play no slots at the casino. Cali Kiss does, though. You ever want to play slots? Call Cali Kiss to go with you. She got like the worst luck ever. Like, she had to walk under 100 ladders in her lifetime, and 100 cats must have walked across her in front of her path. Because nobody has a worse time playing slots than Cali Kiss. Like, whatever ladder she walked under and whatever cat walked in front of her, I don't ever want to see that ladder or that cat. Not in this lifetime. My luck bad enough. What year did you meet Big U? Somebody already asked that, man. Uh, that question's already been asked tonight. Uh, no real stories on Banker T. I can talk about Banker T, but I don't think I got no stories on Banker T. Other than he always liked to use the T word. You feel me? Kevin, I'm done. I'm done, y'all. 90 minutes. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Thanks for the super chats. I appreciate y'all. Um, I got to work on this other video and see if YouTube is going to let me monetize something. Like, I don't understand why YouTube is cracking down on me all of a sudden. So I'm going to do that. Get my ass in the bed. Y'all take it easy. Thanks for watching. Much love, much love, my kids and maniacs. I'm out, sis. Y'all peace. You won't get another story until they approve these stories. So maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, whenever they approve me for monetization, you'll get a story. Peace.